commentary and analy an analysis right now. Major Glenn Ignazio, who's who's back with us uh, to provide that analysis, following up on what Robert just said, Major, the you know the. The delay that I think we talked about on the program yesterday for the Israelis going in is still in place, but clearly the focus right now on both sides, I would say, is on the hostages, those leaflets being dropped and everything else. How do you expect things to play out here as the week goes on? Yeah, great. I mean, the idea that two more hostages is out is, is fantastic. But as, as we said, if we ran a math, it's going to be another couple hundred days or at least another couple of months if they were to release two every other day. So if we can get a, a massive amount out, that would be fantastic. It's the two major issues against uh, Israel right now from the international community is one, the hostages, and two is the humanitarian issues that are affecting the Palestinian uh, people. So if, if more hostages can get can and get released, that the Palestinian people can be, get behind releasing them and push Hamas, that's better for both. And hopefully that's one of those things that'll break things open. All right, let me go to two uh, areas of reporting that we've seen the last uh, a couple of days. I think they bring up interesting points. One is from Axios, which came out this morning. I'll just put this up for a second. The, the reporting from Axios says that Israel's willing to delay the invasion to discuss a larger release of hostages, which is what you and I are, are talking about now. So maybe that buys a little bit of time, right, so that, um, you know, there's a, a group of hostages that are all put out at once. The second piece, you see the Axios, uh, quote, unquote, scoop over here, is from the New York Times. And I want to talk about this as well, because the New York Times raises concerns about Israel's plan of action in Gaza. They're looking at what the defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, is saying and have been stressing that they need to have careful consideration of how the forces in Israel might conduct their ground invasion, because Hamas has had a long time, 15 years, to prepare for this war, it, the dense population and everything. Is Israel ready for what it's about to go into, do you think? Are they prepared? Well, I think they have all the forces and everything prepared from that. They're looking at it from, again, land, air, and sea. And you see them preparing the battlefield with these strikes by trying to take out Hamas. But at the same time, you know, this is going to be a very, very slow ground war with uh, dismounted troops, basically troops on the ground that have to literally go building by building, room by room to clear for Hamas. So I, I believe that they're ready for that. But the thing to also watch out for is every airstrike or every hit that has collateral damage that's either impacting uh, individuals where they're losing their lives is going to have a backlash from the international community. So regardless, you have the humanitarian effort that is is not really sustaining Palestinians, and, and that's getting the international community. The same thing is every airstrike, you know, that's high explosives that has collateral damage and is even the damaging the infrastructure. So all that rubble and all that damage gives a, a challenge for the forces to actually move through. If they're going to use armor, that's going to be a tough thing as well. Plus, it gives Hamas a, a lot of hiding points from either snipers or bombs, uh, you know, uh, uh, devices like that. So they are facing a formidable environment in itself, not even including the tunnels. But I believe that they're ready for it, but it's going to be a very challenging, dirty, and dangerous task. And the final point I would make with you, Major, is this concern about a wider, wider conflict that we, we've been talking about throughout this in our coverage. It, uh, what I've noticed in the last couple of days, a number of U.S. officials, and it happened again today with the Secretary of State, have brought up Iran in public, just on public warnings, it seems like, to the Iranians. It seems like it's being done um, on purpose by the Biden administration. Here's Secretary Blinken at the U.N. here in New York earlier today. Let's listen does not seek conflict with Iran. We do not want this war to widen. But if Iran or its proxies attack U.S. personnel anywhere, make no mistake, we will defend our people, we will defend our security swiftly and decisively. How close are we, in your view, to something much bigger than what we're already looking at? Yeah, I mentioned again, I think it's a it's an incredible hair trigger. Uh, and the reason for it is, you know, Israel said, hey, you know, Hezbollah, we don't want a war with Lebanon. We don't want a war with you. But let's think about those proxies. Hamas is a proxy. Hezbollah is a proxy within that specific region. You also have the Houthis from Yemen way down south that have launched missiles already. They're a proxy. You also have attacks that are going on in western Iraq and Syria against U.S. forces. Those are all supported and backed by Iran as well. So if forces, if, if first of all, if any naval ships or anybody else is directly attacked and damaged, that is going to be a trigger. And the same thing as what are the escalations with these forces against Americans specifically. So any attack against American, and that's not just in Israel, that's an entire region, could really be a trigger against Iran. What would those options be that the U.S. would take? 
That's unknown right now. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.